um, I will give my input because uh, I am a political commentator. That is what I do. Starting now, if you are ready, SABC, if you are ready with your feet, you'll tell us when you are ready. Thank you very much. To the people at home, uh, all the various sectors of the economy, that are waiting for this presentation, we say good morning to all of you. The president spoke to a risk-adjusted approach to easing the lockdown. We have with us today
economic position. We were downgraded, and then we have this. So it's a combination of all those things. And despite the advanced in technology, we don't have a cure or a vaccine yet for this pandemic. And so it means we have to rely on the measures that the World Health Organization has given to all of us. And if we don't stick to those, it will not help us because now we're going to be moving to level four. Level four means the lockdown is still there, but there will be a few things that will, be, that will change. We should not think that when we move for level four, it means the lockdown is gone, no. The lockdown is still there, there'll just be a few changes, but what is important is that there will be more people and more companies opening up and more people going to work. That's basically the major change. The rest, more or less, remains the same. And of course, we are taking all these measures to try and make sure that the curve of infection, the speed of the spread of infection is not high, so that the curve does not overwhelm our health services. Because if more people, many people get infected at the same time, there'll be more people who need hospitals at the same time, and there'll be even more people who will need hospitals and ICU beds at the same time. And if that happens, our health service will be overwhelmed and our people will not be able to get the necessary treatment that they do need. And we must bear in mind also that in this epidemic, nobody can say, I'll keep myself healthy. Our health is very interlinked. What I do may affect your own health. What you do affect other people's health. So this epidemic is showing us how our lives are so interlinked. And that's why the president and the cabinet in the country has taken these aggressive interventions so that we don't get to a point where our health services that are infected and by the numbers that need hospitalization. And of course, our, the virus has also exposed our deep, deep fault lines in South Africa. There's ex they've exposed the issues of harm and inequality. It has also exposed our special planning that we inherited from apartheid and we haven't really changed uh, in, a, in a critical way. So all these things contribute to how we must behave and how we must deal with this uh, pandemic. And let me also say upfront that if we move down to level four, which we will do by Friday, and we do not stick to the conditions, to the restrictions, to the public health conditions, and the virus starts speeding up in terms of more people getting infected faster, we will not, the government will have no option but to move very swiftly back to level five. So it doesn't mean that if we move to level four, if we stick to all the things that need to be done, all of us collectively, then we may be able to hold on on level four and eventually get to level three. But if we don't, whether it's individuals, collectives, companies, because if companies also don't stick to what they are supposed to do, and the infection in a company, the company might close. And if the numbers go up, we go back to level five. If the numbers remain stable, we may remain to level five, and if they start showing a decline, we may 
go to level three. So it's all in our hands, South Africans. Depends on what we do, whether we stick to what we are supposed to do or not. So we must make that choice ourselves. So there are things that are going to remain in place. And I want to put those up front so that we understand that we, it's still a lockdown, but an easier lockdown. So things like interprovincial travel will still not be allowed, except under exceptional circumstances, like people returning to work if, they are in the, if, if their sector is open or their company is open, or people going to funerals under strict conditions. Uh, so, interprovincial travel is still not allowed. Or people coming back to school, universities when they do open. But other than that, you remain where you are. You remain at home, except if you are going to work, or you are going to buy essential goods, or you are going for medical Visiting is still not allowed. You can not visit your friends, visit your neighbors, visit your relatives. That is still not allowed. Exercise will be allowed, but under very strict conditions. Things like gyms will remain closed, organized sports, or walking or jogging is not allowed. We will put very st strict regulations under which exercise can be done. So I just want to put that up front, that it's not the end of the lockdown, it's the easing. It's the risk adjusted approach. It's not just lifting the lockdown, but because we need the economy to start working and the wheels of the industry to start grinding, we are opening and Minister Patel will explain how this will work. But let me just show you also where um, I've, I've said about this, but I think having said all this, our approach should not be that we should not feel overwhelmed by all this. But instead, we approach this coronavirus as a challenge to be met by all of us collectively and not a threat to be feared. And we must meet this challenge collectively. So I would also just want to move to maybe explaining where the country is in terms of the infections. You'll see a map of South Africa with different colors and, and numbers. The numbers are just the districts or the metros. We've allocated every district and every metro a number. But the colors are the ones that we must watch out for. The red ones, the red spots, you can see a little red spot around Cape Town, you can see a little red spot around Nelson Mandela Bay, a little red spot al al around the Buffalo City Metro. You can see a red spot around the Teguini. You can see a red spot around Gauteng, especially Jobek and the Guruleni and the pit in, in, in Pretoria. You can see a red spot in Mangao. Those are where the numbers are biggest. We may say those are the epicenters. So that, that is why we do not want and we are still restricting interprovincial movement. Because if you move from Cape Town, where the epicenter is, 
or Gauteng or Eteguini, and you keep going home, which may be in the Eastern Cape or KZN or Limpopo or Northwest, every weekend you, you may be taking the virus to places which do not have high numbers. And if we keep moving interprovincially, we may end up with the whole country being red. And that's not what we want. And that's why we limit the interprovincial movement. It's the same as we limited the international movement. We closed our borders because people were going in of other countries were bringing the virus or people were coming to visit us, were bringing the virus uh, even unknowingly, and then they tend to be positive and they spread. Now we've closed the outside borders. Now our boundaries within our province like that as well may act like that if we keep coming to Gauden and back or Eteguine and back, we may be the virus in areas where the, the virus is not so much. So we must understand that every action that you are taking, what is underlying is trying to cap the accelerated spread of the virus. So as you can see, the orange parts are also parts where the spread is there. They are second to the red spots. The yellow parts are third to the, to the red and the orange spots. And then the blue are fourth. They are number four in terms of the spread of the virus. So I think that uh, shows you exactly where we are. So the whole country is going to be level four. But they, there may come a time where we would differentiate the levels. There, would come, there may come a time where a particular area may be on level five, but while other areas are on level two or level three, as you can see those colors. But for now, we were all on level five and we are all going to be on level four. So that must guide us. So it's important then to remember that the lockdown will continue even under level four, but it will be easier because those who will be going to work, there will be more going to work than in level five. But because we still have the lockdown, there they will even be a curfew. The curfew means when you come back from work, you stay at home. It doesn't mean that now that some may be working after work, they can go everywhere. You come back home. And we will explain when you go to work, the sanitizers must be there at home or washing of hands with soap all the time. When you go to work, you must sanitize. At, when you enter transport, sanitization is important. But when you leave your house, you must have a cloth mask. It's mandatory. It's going to be mandatory to use a cloth mask as you step out of your home, going anywhere. Now we know that these masks may not be easily available for now, but if you don't have a mask, you can use a scarf to cover your nose and mouth. You can use your T-shirt. On the health website, they also tell you how to make your own mask at home. So you'll have to have your nose and mouth covered in public. Thing that we, we must understand. So nobody should say, no, I couldn't get a mask. The surgical mask and the N95 and all those masks we leave for the health workers. 
who are in the front line. And maybe people who deal with mortuaries who are also in the front line. But for all of us, a cloth mask. Homemade, bought, if you don't have, you put whatever you have. My scarf here can be a mask. So nobody uh, should have an excuse. And I had a cloth mask is only because SAPC said they couldn't hear me properly. So I had to take it off. But anything that covers you protects the others when you cough or talk. You are protecting the others, but you're also protecting yourself from their droplets. So let's do that as we go to work. Social distancing is critical at home, outside, at work. Even those companies that are going, they must observe all these health uh, imperatives. If they don't, then they shouldn't open. And that's why it was said before they open, they must send a team, a small team, that's going to go there and make preparations for all this. And it's critical because industry must stick to the guidelines. Because if you take shortcuts and maybe trying to save money, you may lose more money when that company or that factory has to close because there are people who are infected. They must be screened for temperature, for cough, for any symptoms, flu-like symptoms, the symptoms that we know are related to coronavirus. And if any of the worker has that, those symptoms, they can't they can work, but they must. So screening every day when people come to work is very important. For the protection of the workforce, for the protection of the people you interact with, because if you go to a supermarket, you interact with people there. So it's for all, everybody's protection. The masks are important. Social distancing is important. So we must just stress this. And what we want to see, we want to see the whole country uh, being blue or even further than blue. Further than blue, it will mean there is hardly any, any infection and life goes back to normal. But as long as we have those red spots, and remember that those red spots are where the majority of the population is. They may look small, but that's where the concentration of the economy is in those red spots. But more than that, that's where the concentration of economic activities are. So it's a big challenge to balance because that's where the infections are, but that's where the biggest number of is, and that's where most economic activities are. So it's very important that when we open up the economic activities a bit more, the strict adherence to health, public health instructions is adhered to. The question of gatherings, social, cultural, religious gatherings are out. Weddings, they are still out in level four. The only exception is still the funerals. And of course that's, but other than that, gatherings are still not allowed. And as I said, people can exercise under very strict conditions. And those will be put in the regulations and directions. But it will exclude any organized activity. It will exclude all the recreational facilities, gyms and all that, it's out. 
So we must understand that. And transport will also be there because people need to go to work. The taxis will be there because people need to work, but the protocol, health protocols must be adhered to masks, sanitizers, sanitizing the taxi after loads, after taking a load. And that's very important. And the 70% capacity will be kept. As the economy opens and more people go to work, the Minister of Transport will then announce the change of times and whether we are adding buses and what the conditions will be and if the trains have to be used that will be announced at that time and the conditions will be announced. The, the transport is, support, is a supportive industry to all the economic activities but it also can be a source of infection if we don't keep to the protocols because people are there in bigger numbers close so that's why masks are mandatory sanitization and all that of course e-hailing as it was allowed in level 5 it's still allowed now private cars but the numbers still remain as level five, no more than three people in a private car. And if that has to change, it will change when the situation goes to a, a lower levels where we say the risk is now lower, maybe level two level. So for now, those three in a car, not more, and 70% in the taxi, e-hailing the same. So the most important thing is now to unlock a bit of the local production for local consumption and for export. That's what you are opening up the economy for. But also for purchasing of things that may be necessary for the well-being of people. So when we looked at industry, we looked at what is the risk of transmission in that sector and what measures could be taken to make sure that the risk is mitigated. We also looked at what is the in impact on that sector when the economy, on the, the risk on that sector if it remains closed. But we also looked at the sectors in terms of their value to the economy, including its contribution to GDP, employment, export earnings, and all the value chains. But we also looked at promoting, promotion of community well-being and the livelihoods of, of the vulnerable. Maybe I'll explain that because it might seem strange that we also looked at promotion of community well-being. But you will recall that on level five, we had to open up the issue of uh, baby goods, and children up to toddlers. That's part of the well-being of communities. And you, we know that we are going into winter now. Uh, in a few weeks or a month, the temperatures will drop and people will be cold. So children will need winter clothes. Adults will need winter clothes. So we, we will have to open that up irrespective of the other three areas, because people do need winter clothes. Children do need winter clothes. We may need heaters. So that's how we 
had to look at the promotion of community well-being as well and livelihoods. Because if people don't have warm clothes and it's winter, they will easily get flu. And if you get flu and coronavirus, it's not such good news. So we'll try and make sure that we do that. And of course, the levels, when we look at the levels, we, when we look at the levels, we said there are five levels. Um, the five levels, starting with number five, that's when the economy, sorry, that's when the health is not ready the low level of readiness should the spread go very fast. So when we get to that, combined with the high speed or accelerated increase in infection, that's the level that we call five. Because it means the high increase with the low level of a readiness or capacity in the health service creates a problem. It overwhelms the health service. Level four, which is just slightly lower than that, is when you still have a moderate increase, but you also have moderate readiness in terms of health. So that combination is still not good because it means that if the increase were, if the infection were to slightly increase, then you will get into trouble. So level three is when you almost are in the middle, moderate to mild, but your Readiness is also um, mild or moderate. Level two is when the increase infection is low or mild is also not that high. Level one is where you have low infection and high readiness. That's where we want to be. Level one is where we want to be, where there is low infection and high level of readiness. Level five, we want to move, is where there is high infection and low level of readiness. So those are the levels that we are looking at. Now we are at level four, and that's why I said to you, we can swiftly move to level five if the infection accelerates because we are not at a point where we say you are at a point of high readiness everywhere. So that might, but if we, if we keep to all the things we need to do, we might stay on level four and eventually go to level three. So I've talked a lot about what we need to do in terms of employment. Where are my slides now? Uh, oh. So we are now going to just Okay, I've explained the, what, we, what, we have, what the systems that we have used, system one, that's how we got to the levels. So we call them alert levels. So I will not deal with that much, I've dealt with it, and the industry I've dealt with, and the health 
So those are the levels, as you can see. So where we want to be really is level one, where there is low spread and high readiness. And as I said that when we test the rate at which the proportion of the population is tested must increase. That's why we are increasing our testing. But we, it's better if those people who are tested, that the positive tests don't increase too much. The proportion of, the, of, the, of those who are tested don't increase too much. But also the rate of fixed makeshift hospitals, quarantine areas, per thousand population, that's how we measure whether we are ready or not. And of course, the rate at which the proportion of hospital beds is being utilized for COVID is increasing. If the rate is lower, that's a better place to be. And the industry, I've, I've, I've explained, and we are also saying, according to WHO, and also according to our own scientists, you remember when Professor Karim spoke, he said, workers, if possible to work at home, work at home at all times. Whether it's level four or five or three, if you can work at home, work at home. But if we have to bring people to work, which has to be done, those who are age 60 and above must work at home as much as possible and must remain at home. Why? Because they are the most vulnerable to this COVID. The younger you are, the less serious the COVID disease will be, even if you get infected. The younger you are, the milder it is. And maybe you will even be symptomless, which is why this problem, why coronavirus is a big problem, because there are lots of similar, symptomless people who are walking around, nobody knows they have the virus, they don't know they have the virus, but if they spread it to older people, the older people are most likely going to have symptoms, and they are most likely going to have more serious symptoms. And the mortality rate from 60 above increases. <clears throat> And of course, those who have comorbidities, that is, other diseases, whether it's diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, cancer, other immune suppressing uh, diseases, you have a problem, TB, lung problems, then if you have that already, and then you get COVID, then it's a it's a serious combination. And that's why we are suggesting that those who are over 60 work at home as much as is possible and be kept at home as much as is possible. And of course, uh, in terms of income, there should be engagement with the employers and UIF in terms of how they can be compensated. And as I said, Workplace protocols, health protocols must be kept, surveillance, testing, screening must be there all the time. And even the things that we have taken for granted, biometrics, unless you are going to put your finger, clean, finger, sanitize, finger, sanitize, it might be better not to use it. Because if one person is carrying corona in their finger and they leave it on the biometric 
place and somebody puts their finger, they'll take it with them. And many other people will end up infected. So it's very important that we ensure that we look at all those things in detail and how they can affect health. That's why even in funerals, we've limited the number, but even limiting the number is not enough. We have to change the culture. Because if you are closing the grave and you are exchanging spades or shovels, then somebody leaves corona on that spade, probably all those who have touched that spade might end up with it. That's why it's important to sanitize your hands, to put a mask on. Even after the funeral, we tend to have bath food and we serve it, in, serve it in a buffet style. Then we put one spoon for everyone to dish. If it's rice, there's one spoon for all 50 of you. Now, if I'm the first one or the third one or whatever, and I have coronavirus, and I take that spoon, I dish, the next person will end up with it. So that's why sanitizing all the time is so important. Wearing a mask is so important, but also trying to do away with those practices that actually encourage the spread of the virus. In some of our cultures, when we come back from the grave, we wash hands in one basin. Those, cult those practices must be changed because if we wash hands in one basin, we may be putting coronavirus in the basin and other people may get it. So there are so many culture change things that we'll have to address with this coronavirus. So there we are just stressing what should happen in business in that slide. Identify the workers that are vulnerable in age and comorbidities. Safe transport of the employees. Screening as you enter the workplace every day. And testing those who may have symptoms. Sanitizing, face masks, protective equipment. Uh, good ventilation in the workplace, even in canteens. We can't sit in the same way as we've been sitting in the canteens. We have to change, make sure there's social distancing, nothing more than less than one and a half to two meters apart. So all those things are culture change practices. We have to change that because the culture of the workplace must also change. Workers can come and say, oh, I haven't seen you in such a long time. They hug, no. And they kiss, and they, that have to stop. Whether you have seen that person or not, if you want to really greet and with touching the person, you can do it with your elbow or with your feet. We should just try to avoid. Maybe high or something. But touching is the thing of the past. At the workplace, public place, no. So these are some of the things that we have to do. And we are suggesting that companies that have big workforce must test randomly, besides the screening of every worker as they come in. But they must also test, just to ensure that we are not sitting with a lot of asymptomless people who are just quietly spreading the virus. Because if the virus spread in a workplace, that workplace needs to be shut down. So it's, it's very important to ensure that those things. So we will be putting out regulations and we will be uh, giving the sectors 
unions and others that document so that they can make comments but also be prepared for what is to come. Uh, Minister Patel will go and explain around the sectors what are the things that are changing. That's the important thing to know what change what is changing from five to four. But I want to just also emphasize that coronavirus is a collective challenge. It's not government, it's not Department of Health, it's not individuals, it's not industry, it's collective challenge. That will require shared sacrifices. The impossible goal of going to level one and zero. It seems impossible, but it will be possible if we take this as a collective challenge. But also remember, we have to make some sacrifices. It's not punishment, it's sacrifices that we must make for our country, for our economy, for our fellow citizens. And the last reminder is also that it's not the health measures that will destroy the economy. It's the virus, the pandemic. So if we don't stick to the public health imperatives, it will be the virus, because if the virus spreads in the workplace, so we mustn't think, oh, these restrictions are the ones that are destroying the economy. No, it's the pandemic itself. So we must stick to all the things that would limit the pandemic. Uh, I lockdown le le simo a basic son. A scissor took shinja and jiganan. Got a sivu, a gush wooty, jung of a scissor suga. We level his slime, see a level his scene. Say who are lala. Uncle Sizologus adjust a gangane. Si pega and jugutumgo, si bunga goopi. Si adjust a gangane, si lungi se gangan. So Uzobane Nokshin Janjaganan exugelak five kuyak four. Go down oba isimo as kashinj. Ukonizin to esngezu shinj. Okfanesizishonji. Stakal. Sing as a sitting clambing with slan, house, or business, Kuligi Lynch, the Guma Gamma Kang, and good lady mean car, going in jail. Ask a zoo vagashelan. Sisazo Salikai, Upumekai and Goba Uyapi, Uya M. Sebenzin, Upumekai and Goba Uyaga Dogotella, no Mio Funumuti, Upumekaya. Ngoba uyotengu ula. Ubu uye logo ula uzo pega laikaya uli. E, agezu banje iga makanta, askezu hamba nje isi yotengu chwala, skulu lege ka. Agezu bakona leyoto. Askezu hamba futi. Sivarashe la mapondo, suge keze en, uti kama nje ngi pege, khaute ngi kama nje ngi pege, eka apaka aike zugwe nze galeyo. Uhambo lzo bakona, oluaba sebe nzi, lapo in kampani zabo ezifulaga busha, bezo suga lagate bekona, babu yele msebe nzi. Uhambo olunga bakona, Manga begu nesimo, 
esingasazi esingajwayelekile noma kunesimo somngcwabo nakhona imngcwabo ingane obaba omkhulu phela akabi ivulelwa nje ukuthi omzala nomzala kamzala cha kuseyisimo esi saqinile ngobisimo segciwane asikashintshi kakhulu sishintshile sona kodwa hayi kakhulu abantu abazovunyelwa futhi ukuhamba ilabo hlamba abasebenza egauteng kodwa babe behlala empumalanga noma behlale northwest labo bazovunyelwa kodwa bazofanele ukuthi babe ne permit abayitholayo ne inganze sikole sikole mas iikole mas ezifundiwe ezifunda kwenye province kodwa ihlala kwenye zihamba zonke inzuku nazo uzofanele zibe ne permit indaba yoku yokujima akezuyiwe jimini akezuyiwe maklabini ukuthi si organize asikwazi nokho organize sewomakhelwane nja yake si organize yini siyogijima cha uzoba uexerciser sizokusho emthethweni sokukhipha ukuthi kuzokwenzeka kanjani kodwa kuzoba strict kube limited ngoba isimo asikavu asikusho futhi ukuthi uko bebeleka nje siye nje ma tavern siye ma barin siye ma ebendaweni zokudla ma restaurant nemcimbi noma imiphi imcimbi ehlanganisa abantu ayikavunyelwa nokohlala ema restaurant akavunyelwa nokuya kuphi akavunyelwa ngaphandle ma uyemsebenzini uyothenga ukudla uyo uya esibedlela kudokotela noma uyothenga imithi uexerciser ngaphansi ngaphansi kwaleso sime sosishiwe phela eh sikusho nje lokho kucace ngoba akufuneki ukuthi abantu bacabanga ukuthi hayi manje sekuright sizokwenza noma yini sizokwenza ukuthi futhi makubuye emsebenzini kube nesikhathi la ungeke ukwazi ukuphuma ma usubuyile emsebenzini buye uye ekhaya shayi u8 usekhaya ngaphawula laba basebenza nasebusuku phinde shayi u8 kuze yo shayi u5 xn usekhaya yozuphume ngoba uyaphi emsebenzini noma uyothenga ukudla noma uyakadokotela kubaleke kakhulu lokho uma uphuma ekhaya uma usese ekhaya kufanele njalo uhlale ugeze izandla zakho ngamanzi nensipho noma ngesanitize uma uphuma ekhaya awuphuma nje ngami nje uphuma ikhala nomlomo livaliwe livalwe i mask yendwangu eh umuthi ayi angazi ngizoyitholapha indwangu i health ku website yabo babhalile ukuthi ungazenzela kanjani yakhe i mask kodwa umungenayo le u mask ungathatha noma yini nayo nalesikhafu nje ngingaphuma nje ngithi sekwe i mask noma i t-shirt endala sekwe i mask ngoba kubalekile ukuthi ungaphefumuleli ungakhwehleleli ungakhulumela amathako aqashele kubantu nabo ngokunjalo akufuneki ukuthi mabe khuluma bekhwehlela bethimula bathimlele kuwena siyavikelana ngoba lesifo sisho kubambisana ukuthandana ukuzwelana ngoba engikwenzayo ungakuphilisa kodwa futhi engikwenzayo ungakubulala nawo kwenzayo kungangiphilisa noma kungangibulala so lezo zimo azikashintshi futhi manje sekuqina kakhulu indaba ye mask sekufanele ngempela ngempela wonke umuntu makusukela nje ngolwesihlanu wonke umuntu ophumene endlini fanele aphumene e mask mayiphumela ngaphandle 
Igo gesichi no mungi nayo, sebenzisa logo nayo, onago, uvali kala, uvalum logo, upume, wenze luguti, uvigele, abanyabandi. Ngoba senze lani, senze luguti, e, lesifo, singa njontobali ngokshesha. Ngoba masi njontobali ngokshesha, uba nabanda ba ninga ba dingi ipezele. Ila pogi nkingi zoba kona ngobi ipeze la zetu azu guazu bata tabongi. Asfuno togo te laba fige ezinge nlabe sebezo keta kutubani o, 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 o fawe mshini nubano nga fawe. Noma nga bebe itinga bubabili noma bubata atu la bubatu. Sifunu kuti noma skupura in, 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 le sifo skupure ranane singa njujubali nge sifinini. Senze luguti nga soso nki skati Makona banta batingi special, by told him better, by told him sheen, Bagua succeeds a girl. Any into Clamen Bezwillo Professor Bekulum Guti Bajabu Lile, Gesimo so Guti. Let's see Mosa lockdown, Essing up for me no twala. Send the Guti a bezel. Abanta baza ziyo, ipeze la zga hulmeni. Kulwe san, kumkebelu, kesondo, kwe likasi. Kwe la banta bali mele, aba kwa zene, aba tubuliwe, aba repiwe, kwe le yonki nchobo yendo. We nunga figu kuula nji. Utinu ufele espeze, kubwa asiku espeze. Imshini le, itatwa ilabantu, nchiziwe kwa ziwe, Sangu uta pili swa de iswe theater iswe gu ICU so maunga ya kulei pesel unga kabang chukwe nyinda maunga ya para uye Steve Bigo uye pigle nzugu nanga ma weekend unga kabang chukwe nyinda kuba asi kule sisi muga kuh na ma poesa ya chelo guti ibalo zabanda babulewe. Zabanta ba tuchuli wa ba kwazi wa ba repi we zeshega kuh. Se atandu kuchinjongo ba kse na lesi fu. Sistrine lesosi. Sistrine lesosi mo. Goba isona si mo ngempela ukfani lenga besik sona si lizwe la kunga shibujo unga ma weekend epele la inkinga. Kuzekuwa dogote la ba peshe. Bezo praktiza i emergency e, treatment la koba enda wenzabo ayi kolendo ekona la in South Africa. Agesi za mkuti ngembela singabi isizwe estume mkuti siya kwa zana, siya bulala, siya repana, siya nzani. Kule simo, ebe si kona, so onge lezi nito bezi kili. Siya fisi kuti, si pindi sale. The heat. You go get Go back level four. As quas of Vula Yonkin. See Vula in the Vula Yoga Sigas. Uvula is the most of not. Nako Nangelle Sele Kil. I would develop Vulwinch. In the Lessele Gil, as I went to Guti. Siguazi Ukbaland Guti. Isimo. Se corona singa kubegi mokshesh, kutu mnoto na ubukala, usebenza. Imboni zibezikala zivula. Kutu wafuta ngiishu kuti, uma imboni, noma tina sabasali, noma ubani, uma singa itati le mteto esi nigwa i health. Abeze mpila basicheli kuti kufanele si zenza. Umasinga itati, si zenze la nomi ganjani, kungenze gale sifo, si bwone ii namba sa zilonjoba la ngokshesha. Umas zilonjoba la ngokshesha, uhulmeni, ngege, angabaze uguti abuyele u level 5. Maju muhulmeni buyela u level 5 kushuti si buyela u lesa si muso kala. Inda uoge zengu peni, La inamba sabantaba na lesi fuzi ulga kulu 
ila matolo pa makule sita ma metro. Ila poge la hii namba ziko kakulu. Kodwa futi ila apu lasingagash kutu we are in a state of high readiness. Asingagash kutu isimo setu sesislungele no misi pisi. Ngogwe zempili. Kiaza anywa njengo banboni ile kwa kiwa ma makeshift hospital nani nani na ma quarantine. Kodwa asikafige zingeni lasingati. I know Missy for Snagan to Balagan Jan, Siso Barright Gawoge Ego City, Akfuneg Kanj, Sue Wenny Province, we again. Goba Mosu Buil, got to yell in Pope, got to yell case at N, Susu Seven, the Houting. Ama weekend, Pella Sond, Abu should find a new one at Labant, Abail in Pope, Abazo Buyang Sond, Abu Kolo. And three, I was with Kalawan Tabaya, a case at N, as Eastern Cape. I find a long and jama highway at Kalawan Taba Farasha, I unga my weekend. Masu Buil, Laubuye Lekon, Zotala Corner, Kozik Shi Uguti, Segia Fulelwa, a manchin who come. So listen to Zbalegi Lega Kul. Maggie Wem Sebenzin, Fanele, Yon Kin to Ilandel, and Goba Umunga Ilandel. Umkash, and I landed him to years and peel. So valo lay on down. I so valo him to years and peel is of valo I virus, no be virus is his own genagba sevens, funnily valo. So balegi luguti, so on a sense of funnily squint. Uguzum not to calugut. A bakash bends of funnel, tina sense of funnel. Uma sends a gash Le simo, sale COVID, singa njondlo bali, singa wazu uti pinde kufulege food, siye level 3. Umanga be sing, singa wenzi, futing no wenze uti sibuye leg 5. Ushut kuse zanje nzi tu impili, uti siya 3, masuga ku 4, no masala ku 4, no masya ku 5. Use Zanjin Z to put his sins on, say I landed him tetto, walk fanel. A bad leg a cool, a cool, a cool dog. Uma sing a wind the logo, see five. God a foot of wheel like five queen goes, no back, ends woody. E. E. Bethel as it was not was with Tata won't Otingusizo. Abanta batal, abane miaga ea mashume ais tu pagia pezu. Ogom teto bona bekfani bata lekaya. Uma bewa zuksebenze lekaya banga sebenze. Kanti wong kumuto wa zuksebenze kaya kufunega sebenze kaya. Upumu ya msebenze ingoba msebenze wakunga kufumeli kutu sebenze lekaya. What a lababa name Yaga is true, a bear mushroomized two pagia pezu. Goba, the liquid one, Libana Mantaga cool born. Where no same man, Inganangan, a scholar of four or five years, Christmas scattered a buzz no good about by a cool. What a corner liquid one. Some the banum Kusanga no man, no matting no fire at the hotel. Cotum tom tal, Ukoko, no mum cool. No mumuto nezi nizi ifo. Jengo hai hai, njengo maktui hai hai. Aba no shugela, aba ne kenza, aba ne sifo sesfuba o asma, nezi nizi ifo. Umatkageli korona lapo, wedu na lezi ifo. Isi imo sibap kaiga kulu. Utinu tingi spetlela, wesinska tutinga. Utinu tingu gofa wimshini ya AICU. Manje masa beba ninga kulu. Kuzo shuguta banya bezu wazu kufingelela. Ule mshini banga sizagali. So higo siti kufanele nga sosongi skati. Zinga sifumeli le sifo kutisambe siti. Fanele si sifumeli le kutisambe ganani. Sambe ganani. Logo kekse kuse zanti nzitu. Nabe zempilo bayaza mugu uskrina kutesta. Ukuti ngempela si wazi. Ugum upega na nadesi fu na sem sebenzi in lava ba nama 
abasebenza baningi fanele ba test kodwa wonke umuntu ufanele a screen kusho ukuthi ubheka ukuthi umsebenzi mayifika akanayi temperature akakhwehleli akanazo nje lesimo eh somkhuhlane ngoba siyafana nese corona umena sokufaneka test ubonakala ukuthi unani lezo zimo zibalekile asikavakashele umakhelwane asikavakashele ihlobo sisayi msebenzini sibuye funa ukugcizelela lokho ngoba bayi ibona ngathi bacabanga ukuthi mase kuthiwak level 4 awo sesikushayile sekukamacanga cha akuzuba njalo ele simesibhekene naso sinzima mhlaba wonke ubhekene naso kodwa uhulumeni wethu uye wathatha inyathelo yenqatha eyinqala usaqala yiko ngathi asindlondlobali kakhulu kodwa njengoba sovula kancane umnotho yiko sovula kancane kancane senzele ukuthi singafiki lapho lase sindlondlobala kakhulu mina nangeke ituma ngibuka umabona kude ngibona okwenzeka kwamanye amazwe ethi nje eyi asenzeni konke sonke uhulumeni uthi nje asenzeni konke singakwenza ukuze singafiki kulesa simo yebo sona isifo sizoqhubeka bakuzoba khona abaningana abazoba naso zoba khona abazoshona kodwa asifuna ukuthi sifike kilawo amazinga esiwabona kwamanye amazwe ngakho ke asibambisa nini inselelo le inselelo yethu sonke hayi kahulumeni hayi yami ngedo hayi yakho wedo yabaqashi yabasebenzi yawo wonke umuntu inselelo Inselelo ifuna ukuthi kubanjiswane. Inselelo ifuna ukuthi kube nedisciplini. Inselelo ifuna ukuthi kube khona esithandayo kodwa singakwazi ukwenza. Sikube nama sacrifices. Lama sacrifices awe sikhathe sincane ukuthi isikhathe esikhulu idlule lesifo siphinde sikhululeke. Siyazi futhi ukuthi lesifo sizwe zili into eningi eziyingxaki la kulelizwe lethu indlala ukuhlupheka kwentuleka kwemsebenzi zonke lezo zinto uhulumeni kodwa uthe khona imzamo niyazi umongameli uyimemezele ngeso ntenzayo iyochazwa kabanzi kodwa nje engilishiya nako ukuthi asibambisa nini sibe ne discipline siwavuma ama sacrifices esikhathi esincane khona siyokhululeka isikhathi eside ngiyabonga sibo sibonge kungqongqoshe sibonge kakhulu na kubalaleli emakhaya sese zawu nekeza ke umunye ngqongqoshe osezo sichazela ukuthi njengoba sivula kancane njengoba sesiya ku level yesine bese ku level yesihlanu sobe sese ku level yesine ngalo sihlanu lo ozayo uma kuphela le date le yange 30 lo level 5 esese kuwona so ke sisesa ucela ke ngokukhulu ukuzithoba ukuthi uminister uphathel eze ngaphambili azosichazela ukuthi na yiwaphi la ma economic activities noma sectors azokhona ukuvuleleka eku level 4 without any further ado again we have said to people at home because we would like to reach everybody uh, we don't want to reach only those that can understand english uh, if it was possible we, we could have spoken in every language that is uh, an official language in our country but we are trying the best we can having said that we now call on the minister of trade and industry and competition minister patel 
to come and speak on the sectors uh, that will then be allowed to operate under level four in a few days time and not tomorrow by the way and not after tomorrow but in a few day time after the the after friday on friday in fact on the first the first is on friday on the first of may um, in that Patel, the platform is yours we will we are coming with your computer and we will save you Thank you very much, uh, colleague, and uh, good afternoon uh, to uh, members of the media, to my colleagues, Minister Lamini Zuma, who's leading the work around uh, the national disaster uh, that has been declared, uh, and fellow South Africans. My colleague has set out the overall framework within which the return to work arrangements will take place. To recap, the key messages, uh, we will have a risk-adjusted system that the President spoke about, consisting of three key elements. The first is a new alert system to measure the degree of risk from the highest being level five to the lowest being level one. Second, we'll have an industrial classification system to indicate the economic activities that will commence and showing South Africans how they are affected by each of the levels. And finally, a new comprehensive public health and social distancing set of measures that will apply during the period when the virus is still in our society. Now, I thought perhaps we should start by, by indicating that the purpose of the new approach is to calibrate the level of openness with the level of risk. If, if we have high risk, there are fewer economic activities and less social movement. The economy is able to expand and more movement becomes possible. And so it allows us to restart uh, or increase as many economic activities as is possible given the level of risk. In putting the framework together for industrial classification, which I'm going to mainly speak about, we took four factors into account in determining what the proposals are of whether a particular factory or shop or office is able to open. The first thing we looked at is the risk of, trans uh, of uh, transmission of the virus, the spread of the infection that is posed by a sector or a workplace, and, and also the number of people who have to travel to work and the number of people who have to travel. So that is the one factor. The second factor we looked at was the expected impact on the sector of a continued full lockdown, how it uh, uh, affects the vulnerability of the factor, the economic uh, impact. The third factor was the contribution and the economic linkage of every sector to the broader economy. And we took into account factors like the contribution to uh, the GDP, the number of jobs, the multiplier effect of that sector on the broader economy, the export earnings, supply chain linkages. Does, how does one sector that does components affect another sector that does finished goods? And we looked at industrial policy goals. The promotion of community well-being was the fourth factor. And that, of course, goes to the question of livelihoods of the most vulnerable in our society. These factors have been applied to each of the different sectors in the economy. We took some numbers, quantitative measures, as well as some judgment calls, which are qualitative factors, in these assessments. I want to recognize that it's been a difficult and complex process. 
and a hard balancing act. Every industry, every workplace, every worker wants to return to work. We all want to get South Africa working fully. But we need to strike a careful balance between getting to work as rapidly as possible and containing the spread of the virus and saving lives. We're also striking a balance between the four factors that I spoke about, as they are all important. And the new arrangements to put into place will be based on a phased return to work. It's not everybody return to work on the same day. It will be phased in. We need to work as hard as possible, all of us, as South Africans, as companies, workers, organizations, consumers, to bring the risk level in the economy down. If we can bring the risk down below a level four, if we can get it to level three, even more activities open. If we get it to level two, uh, further activities open. So the big focus must be on trying to bring the risk levels down. And we can all play a role in doing so. The return to work of increasing numbers of sectors will bring greater levels of workplace testing. So in the large companies, it will now be possible to test workers. And so we'll get more reliable, more comprehensive information that we feed into our national system. And that allows us to say, in this particular area, we are now confident that the risk levels are low and we can in fact move that area to a lower level of risk and more activities can open. So that's the critical thing we're trying to do. We also want to use the phased approach for another reason, and that is to enable firms themselves to get the workplaces ready for a period of COVID. Tell us that we need to brace ourselves, we need to prepare ourselves that over the next uh, six, eight months, the virus is still going to be very active in society. And so we can't simply uh, get back to work as if the virus is not spreading. The workplaces themselves have to be changed, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. The focus principally in this phase, level four, that will commence on the 1st of May, it's International Labor Day, is about restarting core parts of the economy. We're con considering a more measured reopening of more retail, in order to continue the limit on movement in the society. As has been said, the virus doesn't move. People move. When many people move, the virus moves rapidly and spreads very quickly. In moving from level five, which is the highest level of the lockdown, this is where we are now, to level four, we need to strike a careful balance. If we move too fast, we, are, we risk a, a rapid rise in infection, and we will find ourselves with many ill people, many more deaths, and we have to return immediately to level five, which is detrimental to the economy itself in the long term, in addition to the fact that we would lose people whose lives otherwise could be saved. If we move too slow, we prolong the economic downturn, and we risk that parts of the economy will not be able to continue. We know that we recognize that it's real. So we must move forward, but we must do so with a degree of caution, or as the president has put it, in a risk-adjusted manner. The proposal uh, that we will be putting to sectors uh, today uh, follows discussion that we had with businesses, with firms, with organizations of, uh, of uh, individual firms, but also with the trade union movement. We've listened to comments by, by many uh, citizens, by comments that we've seen on social media, and we've taken that into account. The current essential service activities that operate under level five is already extensive. They cover many sectors already. All of energy and water, sanitation, and telecommunication infrastructure is currently uh, at work. So too is the health sector, food production, healthcare products, and hygiene products, as well as critical public sectors. Most of financial sectors are currently at work. 
parts of retail, of mining, of manufacturing, of construction, of communications, parts of the media, some call centers, and, the, and parts of the public sector are at work. They will continue to operate when we shift to level four, but we will be adding additional economic activities to that list. With a change in the lockdown from level five to level four, as we move to that level, we estimate that it will enable uh, more than one and a half million South Africans to leave their home and go back into the workplace. That's roughly the additional number that we expect. The exact number, of course, will depend on many factors, on how many firms reopen, uh, on the final arrangements involving uh, sectors like education and so on. And it will be based on a framework that we're still developing for different sectors. Now, if we look at the economy as a whole, if we add these roughly one and a half million persons to those who are already working at the moment, it means more than four out of 10 uh, workers in the economy will in phased ways be back at work. That's just over 40%, depending on the final list of sectors and activities and the final schedules for education. We will of course release a firmer uh, estimate once the final list uh, of reopened sectors has been completed following the processes uh, that Minister Lamini Zuma has outlined. I want to turn to the new activities that uh, is proposed for reopening. In agriculture, uh, forestry and fishing, that whole sector will begin to reopen because that now will include logging uh, and forestry as well as horticulture, the transport of livestock, and uh, animal auctions, uh, of course, under clear social distancing uh, directions that will be issued. In manufacturing, there will be a further partial opening of the sectors. The sectors will not be open 100% during level four because we need to give firms an opportunity for a phase return to work. We need to begin to test the systems at factory gates, at work areas, in the canteens, in bathrooms, in the screening of workers, in transport, uh, in arrangements for those who have the symptoms of COVID-19. And of course, also to progressively increase the number of people who are on the road moving to work and moving from work. As a broad baseline, 20% uh, of all manufacturing workers will begin to restart during level uh, four, but some subsectors of manufacturing will have a higher number of workers, a higher proportion of workers who will be able to return progressively to work. Still not to 100%, but to more than 20%. They include uh, the following sectors, children's clothing and winter clothing. We know imp how important it is for families to be able to get warm clothing. Part of fighting the virus is uh, to avoid the cold. Blanket manufacturing for a very similar reason and other uh, bedding and uh, computers and mobile phones so that we can enable more people to work from home. Uh, some car manufacturing and the components that goes into cars. Some manufacturing of cement and other construction material as well as hardware. Because as construction starts, they will need the stocks of these uh, basic raw materials that are, are required. And of course, stationary production, because we've got to begin to get ready for the return of, um, of uh, workers to factories where they'll need stationary, and uh, down the line also uh, the arrangements involving higher education and, and, uh, and schooling in general. So that covers manufacturing. If we look at the shops, and uh, they are the retail sh uh, stores, the wholesale, wholesale stores, uh, some additional opening of retail uh, will, will take place in level four. We recognize that shops are a big vector of transmission. When you go to the shop, there are greater opportunities because you mix with so many people for the virus to spread. So we really want to appeal that visits to the shops 
be as infrequent as possible, only go when it's really necessary, and keep it as short as possible, and we have to maintain social distance and adequate sanitation arrangement in the various shops. When I'm talking of retail, I'm of course not only talking of the large supermarkets. We also mean here the uh, reference to uh, informal trading uh, and to spaza shops. The categories of retail uh, sales that will be expanded include children's clothing, winter goods like winter clothes, blankets and heaters, stationery and educational books, tobacco products, uh, and personal ICT equipment. Those are things like computers and um, uh, 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 mobile phones and other home office equipment. I move next to mining. Mining has already uh, begun the process of workers returning to work. They do so in batches because of the large numbers involved. Not all workers in mining can go back at the same time. And my colleague, Minister Mantash, has already outlined how that process will work. In level four, the new addition is that those workers who work in open cast mining, in other words, not underground, uh, they will be able to go back in larger numbers. Again, in phases, but returning uh, in the period from the current 50%, uh, eventually over in phases to 100%. Services will also increase. From some professional services that will be required by firms that now open, so if a car factory opens in part, they may need people who, who do professional services, engineering services, accounting services, legal services, and so on. So those services will follow the opening of the economy in level four. But it also includes uh, other, uh, other key uh, services. And uh, I can draw attention to call centers will now have an expanded number of activities that take place. Uh, recycling uh, sectors will also reopen, including informal recyclers. Construction will have expanded activities. Previously, it was really critical maintenance and construction works. It will now be expanded to include civil engineering for public work projects, and these include water, energy, and sanitation projects. And we also will be bringing road and bridge projects uh, in during level four, so that uh, in rural areas we can begin to attend to the importance of building new roads, maintaining roads. As regards restaurants and other places serving food, uh, restaurants and takeaways as, other, as well as other similar places will be open for delivery only. And that delivery means that the customer don't come to the shop or the um, takeaways, but the food goes to the customer. Because the experience all over the world has been that that is a better way of limiting the movement of people so you won't be able to visit a restaurant uh, to sit down uh, or to fetch your food, but you can phone, you can make some other arrangement, do online, uh, and, uh, and ensure that um, uh, you are able to tap into the food that's available. It's an opportunity to create a food delivery network in townships as well. Now we've pulled out a few key areas. We will share a detailed document uh, with all the proposed sectors, and what changes between level five and level four uh, with the sectors concerned. So we'll be sending that today still to business organizations, to trade unions, to uh, sector organizations. And uh, a copy of that will be available to members of the media at the end of uh, the briefing today. We will also produce a simple graphic, a simple graphic that will uh, show in very clear ways uh, what is uh, envisaged in level four? What are the activities that will reopen? What are the social activities uh, that we as South Africans now will be able to engage in? So that it's clear and it's, uh, it's something that uh, we, can, uh, we can all have an equal understanding of it. So what we've outlined today and what the document, the more detailed document will show is a phasing in of more parts uh, of the productive economy but we are having to look at 
all of this through the spectacles of health to make sure that uh, the uh, level of infection is not spread uh, significantly, that we don't get uh, a, a huge pressure on our healthcare system with large numbers of people uh, getting into the healthcare system. We're going to do whatever is possible to try to limit that. The phased reopening of the economy is also an opportunity to support South African uh, made products, to buy local, because we've had a significant knock on our economy. There's no question about it. COVID-19 has hurt the economy, it's hurt jobs, it's hurt firms, small businesses, uh, township enterprises, larger companies, they've all been hurt. When we as South Africans go back to the shops and we buy locally made goods, we bring demand back into our economy and we help the economy slowly to recover. We're seeking to enable a greater level of working from home and to facilitate access to computing. So you'll see in the detailed arrangements that it really is facilitating a shift in many sectors or digital form of communication. As I indicated earlier, we're particularly focusing on primary sectors like agriculture and mining, forestry and, and so on, because they provide the input into manufacturing and they are the start of most value chains in our economy. The phased introduction is a, a good opportunity for workers and uh, managers to work together at the workplace, to get the workplace ready for COVID. So it means as smaller numbers initially come in, we can stress test the system, we can pilot it, we can see what works, what doesn't work, and make the adjustment. We will be talking, as uh, uh, Minister Lamini Zuma indicated, uh, to businesses. Uh, over the weekend, uh, they will all have access to the, the documentation and they can provide us with their feedback and their comment. And we're going to work closely with businesses to ensure that the risk-adjusted approach can be introduced at workplace level. And that means the Department of Health, Minister uh, Zweli Mkize, um, um, will be playing a key role uh, to ensure that we have the right measures in place at workplace uh, level uh, to support uh, a, a COVID-resistant work environment, or one where we take every reasonable step to limit the spread of the virus. There's a role for sectors to develop partnerships with us in how we can bring the risk level in the economy as a whole down, and we can then see how can we move more rapidly to level three if we can get the rate of infection down and we can get the rate of testing up. We're also looking at partnerships with the private sector to strengthen healthcare facilities. The more healthcare facilities we have, the stronger those healthcare facilities are, the lower the level of risk in our society. The new arrangement will increase reliance on uh, new ways of doing things, new partnerships. It will strengthen the digital economy. And we recognize there are still many things in the South African economy that require physical delivery, uh, that people need to be physically in a factory to make something. So we want to work uh, together as, uh, uh, in partnership with workers, with firms, with everybody really, to get their, a level of risk down so that we can as rapidly as possible get to level three. But we must always do so recognizing that human life is vital, is important, uh, and that we must uh, calibrate, we must adjust the level of activity with the level of risk. So that, that sets out the broad framework. As we've indicated, uh, members of the media will be getting more detailed documents, they're quite detailed, and uh, they will be the basis of, uh, of discussions, reflection, there will be feedback that we will get, no doubt, from particular sectors who will uh, perhaps give us some good ideas on how we can implement the new framework in a manner that will further reduce risk. And we will use that opportunity also to clarify some of the arrangements that would have to be in place at particular workplaces to ensure that we lower the, the risk levels. So um, to my colleague, uh, uh, Minister Mtembu, that sets out in broad terms the new approach uh, that the President spoke about, that Minister Dlamini Zuma uh, provided the framework for, 
and this gives a little bit of the detail. A document will be circulated uh, to the sectors uh, and uh, trade unions involved. We'll be getting feedback. We'll be make, taking all of that into account. And in the course of next week, having taken uh, into account uh, the, the feedback that we've received, the intention then is to publish this document, to gazette it together with the regulations uh, that would then apply, particularly in respect of level four, so that everybody knows for level four what is expected. So the feedback we're seeking in the next period is particularly around level four to enable us to move uh, swiftly with as few challenges and difficulties between level five and level four. So uh, thank you for the opportunity just to uh, outline the uh, approach on the industrial sectors. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Patel uh, and uh, Minister Lamine Zuma. I think uh, to the people at home, Abbasema Kai, the document, the very detailed document, is what we are going to upload both on our own government website as well as the coronavirus website after this. But also we are putting out that document as a way of showing the various sectors of industry what our thinking is and what therefore they can also put their views on the thinking of government. So it's also consulting with the various sectors of industry uh, on our thinking around this. Having, that's why we have not had the full document because uh, we were going to sit here probably for how many days or weeks if we had the full document. So, but indeed, all South Africans will have sight, as the minister has said, of the full document immediately after this. We have outlined the broad principles that underpin the easing of economic activity under level four. Still, of the, because the lockdown will continue, but we'll have various levels. We are now at level five. We are now proposing, indeed, a level four, uh, that all of us become level four under level four lockdown. We'll then have a level three, that would be good if all of us work together, as Mam Kozan said, and we all move from level four to level three of lockdown. And again, we all work together to move from level three to level two. And we all work together to move from level two of lockdown to a normal level which is level one. That's where all of us would like to be, where all sectors of the industry will be open, where types of gathering will be allowed. That's where we'd like to be at level one. But for now, we are proposing a level four uh, easing uh, uh, of the lockdown that we are in now. Having said that, we will now open to questions and uh, any issues of clarity, we will start with those that uh, are calling in. Uh, can we have the first caller? On the line, we have Aseri from Capital Life. Hello, Aseri. Uh, hello. As Aseri, you are most welcome. Can we hear you? Can you hear your question? Go ahead, Aseri. Yes, uh, my name is Aseri from Capital Live. Uh, I just want to quickly ask Minister uh, Zamini here, uh, which means uh, most businesses will be opened uh, and workers can go to work, especially uh, those uh, that, will, that are called now to come back to work. And there are those school 
uh, kids or those that are going to universities that will, might be going back to the university. What about the early childhood development? What is going to happen with the kids when the parents and the brothers and sisters went to school? Is the early childhood development having any plan or what is the way forward there? Thank you. Perhaps we should also assist colleagues to say that there will be various, particularly the education sector, uh, will be speaking on when are they likely to open schools and how will they open schools, including issues of universities. We will have that briefing on Monday uh, so that we assist uh, colleagues here to answer things that they might not know anything about. We know that the schools and the universities the ministers that are responsible for that area of work will be coming to explain the approach to opening of schools and universities on Monday in the afternoon. And let's have another, but of course, some parts of your question will still remain and be answered. Uh, the next uh, question from the online service. Online service. Minister, the next caller is Benson from Pongola FM. Benson, go ahead. Kuluma uh, Pongola. Uh, Kuluma Benson from Pongola. Yes, Minister, how are you? How are you doing? So far, so what do you say? Can, 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 can you proceed with your question, Benson? <laughs> we, we can't be as good as we can be under the circumstances. <laughs> okay, thank you, Leader. Uh, I'd like to greet the, uh, the Minister as well. Uh, Mr. Patel and Gosazani Zuma. Uh, it's not a question, but I'd love to to say uh, what you did, what the president uh, announced uh, on his address, these uh, five stages uh, that we implemented. Google. Still, if somebody smokes, and then whatever, somebody has got that virus, and then we are taller now and they walk away out the mind. It's only that, Minister. Uh, Siabonga could keep it up. Uh, let's take the, 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 there was another caller. Um, Minister, on another line, we have Bonga from Ikora Indon Sakusa Community Radio. Bonga? Bonga? Hello? We, we are, Bonga, your we question are or comment, please. Ombuzwan in Fishan is a LPG wound or she unfinished shows the hotel at Uda Minister. Usunam Gay, Usunam Gay, the Gaba. We will we, we, come. Mr. Umbuzwan, the Thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we will now take uh, questions that uh, are on our other system, our WhatsApp system. Uh, um, thank you, Minister. The first question... Can we hear you properly, please? Uh, yes. Am I audible now? You, yep. Yes. Oh, thank you. The first question is from Antor, Anton Swartz from ARD German TV. And his question is, with the, relax, with the relaxing of the lockdown restrictions and the phased introduction of industry, will the repurposing of technology be part of the short to medium term strategy? And he's specifically looking at examples of clothing industry making face masks and specifically at the diverting of space age technology from SKA and CSIR engineers to the NVP program. 
the next question is from Geoff Hill, the Washington Times. Um, and he's asking, unlike other countries, SA seems not to have published stats on ethnicity among the cases and the deaths of corona in the country. When can we expect that? Um, well, what, can you report that? Publishing of ethnicity. On, of publishing of stats on ethnicity among both the cases and the deaths of coronavirus in the country. Can, when can we expect that? That's the question. Oh. The next question is from James Stent from Ground Up. He's asking, is many countries have included relief for mortgage holders and renters during lockdown periods. Why has the government decided against this kind of relief measures? Can I just assist uh, colleagues? We will have another press briefing on Tuesday, to be exact, at 2 o'clock. That's when we'll be dealing with the relief measures that have been announced by the President to the tune of 500 billion rands. We will let that question stand over until Tuesday. Next. Okay. Thank you, Minister. Um, Vikas Berger from Netwerk Firentwentag is asking, please provide details on regulations affecting exercise and walking of your dog. <laughs> Under what circumstances will these activities be allowed? Um, the next question is from Miriam Issa from Finweek. How many questions have you given us now? We, we, want, we just want to give you five. Yes, this is the fifth one, Minister. Okay, okay. All right. Um, Miriam Issa from uh, Finweek is asking, can you please tell us what proportion of those affected, infected become seriously ill? In many other countries, 20% of people need hospitalization. How many of those infected have been hospitalized? Okay. Uh, well, we, we do have the acting DG of health. Uh, if he wants to respond to that question, we will give him an opportunity. But let's start with the issue that has brought us here, the easing, um, the risk-adjusted approach to easing of the lockdown at level five, because lockdown will continue, as we have said. Uh, who, who wants to start, colleagues? Um, Minister Lamine Zuma, do you want to start? No, no. They are not all. We will come to the next set. We will come to the next set. We didn't want to take too many, let uh, all of us be, let all of us be confused. Okay, thanks. Um, I think on the first one, the ministers of education will come on stream maybe next week to explain the f different phases and who will, which grade and who will come uh, to school when, and eventually they will also clarify on the issue of um, the, the younger kids who may not necessarily be at school. But in the, in level four, uh, as it was in level one, we did cater for care of uh, the, the people who are ill, people who are mentally ill, people with disability, and children, and the elderly. So that will continue also on uh, five, on four, that those people you we are allowed to get somebody to assist, to care for them, or people who work in those places that care for uh, that category of people will also be allowed. And social work services also uh, for those categories will also be allowed, and people uh, in distress, counseling, so the whole range of uh, areas that will be open for people to get assistance. <sighs> On the issue of cigarettes, um, we, we welcome your comments. I think they are helpful because sometimes we don't know what people think um, and I think it's very helpful to hear what uh, people think about the opening of cigarettes. Uh, we will take that back uh, to cabinet and hear what 
let's see. Um, repurposing of industry, my colleague will, will, will expand on that. But yes, of course, I think uh, COVID-19, though it is a serious challenge, but we must also use it as an opportunity to restructure our economy, to introduce new technologies, to repurpose some of the industries. So I, I, I think he'll expand, but generally, as a general rule, yes. And I think it has also assisted us to some extent to move into areas that we were tentative into moving to. Like now, many people don't meet because there are no gatherings allowed, but we do meet virtually. Um, and that is something that we should have done actually some time back, but we didn't. But COVID-19 has just catapulted us into those areas. So I think there'll be lots of silver linings that will come from this dark cloud of uh, COVID-19. Um, the regulations will be published on Thursday, which will be before Friday, about under which conditions you can exercise. So we, those will be published then. But as I said, it will be under very strict conditions because we actually still under lockdown. We're discouraging to see people in the streets. So there'll be no organized walking, no organized jogging, no organized sporting. There'll be no going to the gym. Uh, and as the president himself said, exercise will be under very strict conditions. So those conditions will be spelled out in the regulations. Um, the issue of mortgages, I think you have said it will be expanded on next week uh, by the relevant ministers. Uh, the issue of the proportion of those who are ill and maybe the breakdown of statistics, uh, we are happy that we have been working very closely with the health department and even now the acting DG of Health is here. Maybe he can assist us on those questions. Uh, but Minister Patel may expand on some. Thank you. Uh, Minister Patel, those that you can take. I hope you can zoom. Are you able to zoom to the Minister of Trade and Industry and Competition? Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the question that I specifically uh, uh, am uh, going to be answering is the question from Anton Swartz, and it's about the repurposing of local production to deal with the, the challenge of uh, COVID-19. And yes, as my colleague has said, there are lots of opportunities. We have a significant industrial base, we have know-how, and we can use this to help us fight the, the, the spread of the virus. Let me use the example of masks. We are now working uh, with uh, a number of companies that have the sophisticated technologies to be able to, to make the masks that are used by healthcare workers. They're called N95 masks, and they need to be kept and preserved for the healthcare workers are the front line of the fight against COVID. They are in wards and hospitals where large numbers of people are or will be coming who are infected. So we've got to ramp up local production of that. But we're also making uh, and, and encouraging uh, the making of cloth masks. I've been wearing this cloth mask that has been made by a small uh, firm. And uh, uh, large companies as well as smaller businesses, particularly smaller businesses, can have this as an opportunity. So in discussion with the clothing industry in which, of course, there are many small businesses, uh, we are able to get uh, a ramp up of cloth face masks that we'll all be wearing in public uh, in future. And in fact, 
the Minister of Small Business Development has also been doing some excellent work to try to stimulate uh, the growth of uh, 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 activities in the clothing industry to help. Uh, members of the media will see that one of the products that will be added in uh, level four uh, are the textiles that are used for the manufacture of face masks so that people can get access to it and, and make it. Some of the face masks can even be made at home and indeed the National Department of Health has already issued guidelines on its website of how you can make your own face mask uh, and, uh, and wear, wear it. Uh, covering the nose and mouth when we are out in public areas. So that's on the one end of the technology spectrum. On the other end of the technology spectrum are ventilators. COVID-19 attacks the respiratory tract. And so very often people who are, who are infected have difficulty breathing. And there's a range of supports that they need. From the time you're at your house, uh, uh, when you are, you are fetched, um, you may need an ambu bag, which gives you the first line of support uh, when you have difficulty breathing. You get to the hospital, you may need what is called a nasal cannula that allows uh, oxygen to get into your system. As uh, some patients' position deteriorates, you may need uh, what is called a CPAP, which goes over the face. Uh, and um, eventually, for, for those who still don't recover in that period, it may require more uh, invasive um, uh, ventilators. So we've been working through a, a project called the National Ventilator Project to bring together all the local efforts. And government's strategy consists of three elements. The first element is when we can get ventilators that are required for the healthcare system anywhere in the world, we want to buy them. So we're out there looking for where ventilators are available. But of course, everybody wants the ventilators right now. So there is an enormous shortage of ventilators. So the second element of our work is to stimulate the production and manufacturing of ventilators using global prototypes uh, where uh, it is available. Uh, we take the technologies that have been developed elsewhere and we encourage uh, local manufacturers using those specifications to make ventilators here. But the third element is to use South African know-how and ingenuity. And of course, we are a country with enormous um, uh, uh, history of, of innovation on many areas. Uh, many uh, viewers may not know, but for those who watch uh, the, the series uh, on television called Grey's Anatomy, there's a big scanning machine, a full body scanning machine on Grey's Anatomy. It's a very sophisticated machine. That machine was designed in South Africa, invented in South Africa, manufactured in South Africa, and it's sold all over the world. So we're bringing the technology and, and technical know-how of a team of, of very capable scientists and um, technologists working on something called the Square Kilometer Array. And they being uh, uh, put uh, uh, to use now to take all the ideas that are coming from different innovators and inventors and manufacturers in South Africa, put it through a, a, a stress testing exercise, see what are the most promising technologies, give it some incubation and other support, and uh, we hope that over the next number of weeks we will be able to complete this process. We'll make a more formal announcement at that point, and we hope thereafter that we can start in production so that before the peak of COVID-19 in South Africa affects our population, we would begin to have produced ventilators here using South African technologies and know-how, South African workers and uh, our scientific base. So yes, we are using the opportunity and we're doing it both because we can't find these ventilators elsewhere in the world, but also it's an opportunity to create jobs and to create industrial uh, uh, output for South Africa. And very importantly, we have a responsibility to the rest of the African continent. Everywhere on the continent, there is a shortage of ventilators. And so we need to produce on scale, both for ourselves, for the South African market, but also for neighbors, because we're in this together. We want to be able to ensure that we as, as, as Africans, our continent is able to survive uh, this very, very difficult period. 
and that we come out with as little damage to the health systems and to with as little loss of lives of our people and of course with as little damage to our economy. So that is how uh, Anton we're using the innovative capabilities. One big motor company Ford is already producing face uh, shields uh, that we, we you can see will be worn by an increasing number of frontline staff that basically shields the face but you can still see through the transparent um, perspex. And so we're using the strength of our component manufacturing capabilities in South Africa to rise to the, to the challenge of producing goods that our country needs, that our people need. Thank you. Uh, DG of Health. Uh, good afternoon, honorable ministers and uh, uh, fellow South Africans. Um, yes, on the two questions, the first relating to the... Uh, um, I wanted to show them our plot mask. <laughs> um, on the question of, of the data, um, we currently uh, provide data on age as well as uh, provincial distribution. There has been no specific trend relating to ethnicity, so we've not published ethnicity data. Uh, suffice to say that uh, currently the trends suggest that about 3% of people that are tested are positive, and that's been about the trend that we've seen since the time of the first case, um, which is uh, way lower than what the global experience has been, which has been much higher, around 10%. Uh, relating to the serious infections, Globally, about 15, uh, sorry, about five percent of people actually uh, have a serious infection, meaning that they need to be in ICU and high care. In South Africa, this number seems to be much lower currently, uh, below three percent uh, in most cases, um, and we're uh, anticipating that we would be able to keep it at this level. But we are aware that. Uh, Globally, this number is much higher, around 5 to 6 percent of people actually go into ICU and require ventilation. And our plans are largely linked to those numbers. Thank you. Perhaps just to add on what the acting DG has said, the responsibility of the government of South Africa is the well-being of all people within South Africa, everyone, immaterial of their ethnicity, immaterial of their background, uh, immaterial of their color. This disease doesn't know color. This uh, infection doesn't know whether you are poor, whether you are rich. Uh, it doesn't know whether you are black, whether you are white whether you are Zulu, whether you are Sotho, it doesn't know those boundaries. And therefore, our responsibility as the government is for all people of our country to be safe. That's why we're taking these measures. That's why we have all these levels that we have pronounced, because our responsibility is to all people of our country. We will then get to the next uh, set of questions. Uh, I know that we have got three from our online facility. Can we start with the first one? Thank you, Minister. The first caller is John Fraser from ZA Confidential. John? John, you, John, are, allowed. you are allowed. Hi. Yeah, I'm John Fraser from ZA Confidential. A couple of questions to Minister Patel, please. Um, first of all, what's happening with the export of non-essential goods? Can these travel freely to the ports and airports? And how are they being policed? And secondly, a question on wine. What's the latest on being able to transport wine for export? And what's the latest on retail, please? Well, well I, I hope Mr. Patel would like to answer that question, but I would have said to him he will answer it when he comes in his capacity as the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry next week, Tuesday. 
Next week, Tuesday, we'll have a sectoral approach where we will deal with all questions related to matters of the economy, et cetera, et cetera, and in the inclusive of the measures that the president has put in place. But if he wants to answer the question, I leave that to him, but he still has an opportunity to do so next week. Next question online. Uh, the next question is from Max uh, from Pondo News. Max? Max, we, Max, we, are, we, listening. we are listening. Well, well we, we, we are not we are hearing anything there. I know that there is a third caller. Can we get Can to we the get third to caller? Okay. Can we get to our WhatsApp friends? <laughs> Thank you, Minister. Um, how but, but can we hear you properly? I'll try my rally voice. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's much better. Okay, thank you. Um, Hajra from Power FM is asking, is there a threshold or indicator of what will be assessed on what will be assessed for us to move between levels or will this be done on a weekly, monthly, weekly or on a monthly basis, for an example? The next question is from uh, Vikas from Netwerk Firindwantach. Will certain parts of the country remain under level five? If so, which parts of the country? The next question is from Nathan from Ground Up. Um, is there a reason for continuing to allow lotto tickets to be considered an essential good and therefore sold at stores during, this, during the lockdown? Um, Zwandil Mbeche from the SABC is asking what happens to people who are outside of the province whose company is now opening and um, when they, because whose, whose, whose company is now opening and they went to a different province during the lockdown or before the lockdown. Just, just ask him whether he was listening. Just ask him that question. <laughs> we don't want to censor questions, Minister. We'll ask all <laughs> questions we receive. <laughs> Um, there's a question from Sophie Mugwena at the SABC. She's asking, the medical team from Cuba is expected to arrive in South Africa tomorrow. Can we please have more information on the numbers and how they will be deployed? And then there's a question regarding the sale of cigarettes. And she's asking, what is the reaction to the decision to lift the ban against the sale of cigarettes? Thank you very much. I don't know who wants to start, but... Uh Minister, Minister Lamine Zuma. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, on the first question, moving between levels, as, as we said, it will depend on whether the spread, on the, on the numbers in terms of the spread of the disease, and also on the proportion of people tested and those who test positive. It will also depend on the state of readiness or the capacity of the health system to cope with many uh, infections. Uh, it will also depend on how we do on this level. If on this level things deteriorate, then we may have to move to the previous level five. But if on this level things improve, then it means again the same system will be used to open up more companies, open the economy a bit more. Um, as I said at the beginning, it will, the, a time may come where other parts of the country, as you saw, we, we've now mapped out the country according to districts, and we are looking at the um, data according to districts and metros to see what's going on there. So there may come a time where there would be differentiated levels. Others may be higher, others lower, depending on what's going on there. So for now, the president announced level four for the entire country, but there may come a time where there would be differentiation. Um, 
and we, we, we do look, we will be looking at the data on a weekly basis. But if there are no dramatic changes on the data on a weekly basis, then we can't change from one level to the other. But over time, if we see that the trends are moving towards us moving to a lower level, then we'll move to a lower level. If the trends show that there is trouble, then we'll move to a higher level. I can't tell at the moment that we would be moving after so, so long. It will depend on the data itself. Um, so I want to just say that, and we will be um, advising the country as Minister Mkise, Health Department, and other ministers have been talking to the country. We will continue communicating, uh, and, and, and the public will know whether we are doing well, whether we are stable at level four, or whether we are going up, or whether we are going down. And that's, that, in fact, that takes care of the two questions. Two questions, yeah. A lotto is not an essential good, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not even though it was being sold to the audience. But uh, maybe Minister will know what the answer is. Uh, are you able to answer lotto? And let me just finish. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <laughs> people who go, who went outside before the lockdown, we know that the, the national roads were very busy in that 72 hours that the president gave us. And people wanted to be locked down in various provinces. There will be an opportunity for them if their workplaces are opening. So they will be given permission by their employers if their workplace is opening and they need to come back. So they will be able to come back to the various other provinces. But what will not be allowed is for them to commute on weekends, go home, come back, go home, come back. They'll come back once and they'll stay where they've come back to work until further notice. And that will be very strict, let me say, because if we allow that, I said at the beginning that the major economic hubs are also the major uh, epicenters for the disease. And therefore, and they are the biggest number of population is in those centers. Now, if we allow them to come back and then to go in and out, there will be a big danger of them taking the disease to the areas that have got lower numbers and then increasing the numbers there. So they must know that they will come back to where they work, but they will not be able to go to the other provinces on weekends. Um, I think when the, unless the, the DG of Health wants to answer it now, otherwise when the Cubans come, the announcement will be made tomorrow of where they are going and how many they are and all that. Um, I think I've tried to accept the Lord. Uh, Minister Patel. Thank you very much. Um, on the two questions that were put to me, the one by uh, John Fraser, uh, though we're going to cover some of the detail next week, um, uh, I'll just briefly reply to those. On the so so let's we should distinguish between where we are now, which is level five, and what is proposed for level four, which will not yet come into effect until the first of May. So currently. Uh, on export of non-essential goods that is not part of uh, what is permitted. So 
uh, essential goods, of course, can be exported. Uh, in level four, there will be more goods that are now manufactured in South Africa. And so an increasing number of those goods will also reach export markets. At the moment, in level five, we have only the production of essential goods. As regards the ports, uh, a regulation was passed that enables all the goods, all the export goods that in level five were already at the port at the time of the lockdown, that those uh, goods could be exported, they could be cleared at the ports and put onto ships so that we clear the ports for our essential goods that need to come in and go out. On uh, the question of um, wine reproposal that uh, 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 sectors will see that is being distributed does not entail the retail of wine uh, in any form during level four. On the, I want to add the one important issue regarding uh, the movement of cargo. At the moment, uh, essential goods can go through any of the land borders to neighboring countries. Uh, we are proposing, uh, and we'll be looking for, for feedback on it, but we're proposing that in level four, goods that come from elsewhere in the world via a South African port, whether it's Durban Harbor or Oar Tambo, and that is intended to go to neighboring countries, can then be re-exported to neighboring countries even if they're not classified as essential goods in South Africa. But that would only be for uh, immediate re-export uh, from the harbor uh, or the, the airport in uh, sealed um, uh, uh, containers and so on through to, uh, to neighboring countries. That is the proposal for level four. It's not currently the arrangement. Then uh, uh, Nathan raised the question of the lotto tickets. I should just indicate uh, that uh, many of the questions that are coming up in, uh, in the briefings are about wine, cigarettes, and gambling. <laughs> um, but on the lotto tickets, uh, the rules are absolutely clear. Lotto tickets are not an essen essential product. They're not in the regulations as an essential product, and so lotto tickets are not able to be sold, they should not be sold at the moment. It was brought to my attention yesterday uh, that there were uh, claims that they were being sold and I had asked my officials to make it very clear to the uh, uh, National uh, Lotteries Commission that they need to issue a statement clarifying uh, that lotto tickets are not permitted in this period. I think that covers the areas yeah. of was. We, uh, did you any question about I think the, the doctors from Cuba, it will be explained when they arrive by the Minister of Health. Is that correct? Thank you very much. So there is no other issue that was meant for you, isn't it? Thank you very much. Th that will be our last round of questions. Uh, do you have any? None. Uh, do you have some? I have many, Minister. Okay. When we have many, I think we will let's take what we can, uh, we, we can then direct others. But others, if they are of the sort that have answered, uh, we can answer them, but uh, in the next briefings uh, that we are going to have. We'll be having many briefings uh, to the media out there. We're having briefing of the HRC, HSRC tomorrow. Monday we are having a briefing of the education sector. Tuesday we are having a briefing of the social and economic sector. So even if we have not answered your question now, indeed we have other avenues and opportunities to answer your question. But can you take a few? All right. Um, is five okay? Let's take five. Okay. Thank you, Minister. Um, Vikas from Nadverk Fundundar is asking, where and when will will the sale of sick liquor be allowed? Uh, when will hairstyles and beauticians be allowed to operate? Under which level is that? Uh, Charlotte from EWN 
is asking, one, the president referenced a devaluation of some responsibilities to provinces, districts and municipalities to determine their own lockdown levels. When do we envisage this happening and what conditions? Secondly, with regards to exercise, what will be the strict what will the strict conditions be? And lastly, what oversight will there be in terms of government and labor and the Department of Labor with regards to companies reopening and specifically checking what they have implemented, that they have implemented the measures they need to in order to be allowed to reopen. Then there's a question from Mshengu from the Sunday Times. He's asking, um, is allowing the sale of cigarettes during level four of the lockdown not an antithesis of what government is trying to do given the effects of smoking on the respiratory system? What scientific evidence and risk analysis was relied upon to, include that, to conclude that it's logical to open the sale of cigarettes during a respiratory virus wreaking havoc all over the world? Um, then the next question is from Olivia Camuendo from Reuters News Agency. For companies and sectors or sectors which will be allowed to reopen, will there be restrictions of how many people can be allowed at work at a time? And the fifth question is from Jill from CCTV. She's asking what happens to people who are due to retirement or relocation, um, who are in one province but need to go to another? Um, and the examples of that is a new job or a new home. Um, this affects business recruitment, remo removal companies, rental agreements, personal travel, etc. So since we, we have not received any from the online, if you are allow me, colleagues, can we take another three, then we are done. From the long list that she has. Uh, uh, can I propose that the first five be answered, then we'll take the last three. Oh, why, why don't we finish? How, how many do you have there? There are so many. You can't even count. I didn't know that a media person who can count. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, maybe then let's just take another five, then we are done. Okay. Um, if I can just have a second. Mm, okay, there's a question from Heidi Jokos from ENCA, and she's asking um, what happens, and this is with regards to traveling in between provinces, what happens if a person who needs to travel doesn't have a license or needs to be dropped off? Um, can they be dropped off to go back to work as of, to, as of today as they're expected to return to work on Monday? Um, then there's a question from Marianne. Um, I think that this is answered is asking will the reg when will the regulations will when will the regulations be available and uh, when will the ministers be issuing directives um, as per all the announcements that have been made can I continue yep okay. is it, l l let's take five that would be the last five because it would be ten when we add to the other five okay those of us who did simple mathematics or arithmetic Okay, Anton um, from Pretoria FM is asking, online shopping and e-commerce encourages social distancing. When will you open up the e-commerce industry? Do you believe there's a risk of spreading the virus through delivery of packages? Um, Sithlem Lambo from IOL is asking clarity, is a clarity seeking question. In terms of the sale of cigarettes, is it a universal lifting of the band on all lockdown levels? Um, that, that's the last one. Was that the last one? And the, the one that you are coming to. Okay. Um, Charlotte Kilburn from EWN is asking, please would you put numbers or matrix to high and moderate with regards to how the levels are determined, e.g. at an average daily increase of 30% in cases, would we, we, we would consider it moderate or high? So basically she's asking at what level of the daily increases of infections would determine the, the movement of, of the levels. Thank you, Minister. Okay. That, 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 that will be the last lot that, that we are taking. Uh, we will still have other opportunities where we will speak to colleagues, but the questions that are remaining there, as we always do, 
we will direct them to the relevant uh, authorities and relevant ministers so that they are answered you have said that they are many it means that you can count them so we will send the many questions uh, to the relevant ministers colleagues uh, minister <coughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think on the issue of liquor, liquor will not be allowed on level four as far as level four is concerned. Um, considerations will be done as we move down the levels, but for now, it's not allowed. Um, at, at the moment, there is a national state of disaster. And the president has announced level four nationally. But I did say there will come a time when there may be differentiations of uh, levels in different districts. But for now, the level of disaster, the, the, the state of disaster is national. So the law does not, for now, allow that every district can now decide, uh, I'm doing this in the district, because the state of disaster is the national state of disaster. When there is a need. It's the state. It's the national state of disaster. But let me hasten to say, there are regular discussions between the provinces and the national through what is called the Presidential Coordinating Committee, the PCC. We have had two meetings already, virtually, and we do meet also with district mayors virtually, and we have had meetings even with all the mayors virtually. So those, the discussions are happening, and COGTA being the cooperative that governance coordinates those discussions, and the president, we are the secretariat, uh, when it's the president and the premiers and other MECs. So the, the, it doesn't mean that when they, because it's a national state of disaster, the national is just working on its own. We're working with all the three levels, but we are not at a stage where each level can decide on their own what they do, which industries they open, and what health, uh, public health restrictions they lived. No, we're not there yet. So, um, as I said earlier, uh, I think the strict conditions under which exercise will be done will be published in the direct, in the regulations. But, as I've already alluded, the gyms won't be opened because they've shown to be a source uh, of spread. Organized exercise of any sort won't be allowed. Um, but we will put it under the regulations. What are those strict conditions under which you can exercise? The oversight on the reopening of industry. Yes, there'll be oversight, but I will leave it to Minister Patel to deal with it a bit more. But we are already working, Minister of Health, Minister of Labor, obviously, but also sectors, Minister of uh, Minerals and Energy in the mines and different sectors uh, that are opening. They, they will be, uh, obviously, strict oversight. But the unions also will be a part of the discussions, and they will also um, uh, be part of that oversight. But Minister Patel will, will deal with that. The cigarette issue. 
I did say that we are listening. Yes, the president announced the issue of cigarettes. We are hearing you, your arguments, and we will take it back um, and see what happens after those discussions. While listening government, uh, we have listened to, to you, and I think the other people who wanted smoking also have been speaking, but we are hearing. We'll take the matter back, and I, I will discuss it and see what comes out of it. But it's interesting that uh, indeed uh, quite a lot of questions have come up around the cigarette issue. Um, understandably so. Uh, then the movement of people, if you are taking up a new job, or if you are coming to your old job, it's the same. You will be given permission to move, to come to your new job, or to come to your old job. But what will not be allowed, whether you are taking up a new job or an old job, is when you have moved to an area of high infection, is to move up and down. That will not be allowed. If you have finished your job, you are retiring, and you have to move to another province, uh, the, the, your company will, 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 will say so that you need to move in a, as much as it will say if, the, if you are taking up a new job or coming to your old job, they will say that you are moving, and if it's not urgent for you to move straight. It's fine if it's urgent. It's, sec it's exceptional circumstances. They will be weighed on an individual basis. There's no rule that said all retired people can go back or whatever. It will come under exceptional circumstances. It will be examined. And obviously, if there's merit in, in it, it will be allowed. But generally, interprovincial movement is not allowed, except when you come back to your job, old or new, and you are not allowed to go up and down after you've come back uh, until uh, further, new, further notice. Um, the issue of cigarettes saying, is it being lifted forever? Uh, for all levels. Level 5 does not have cigarettes. So it's not like we're saying now whether the infection goes high and we have more restrictions but cigarettes are exempted. No, they're not. It's on level 4 that the president said there is a consideration that they might be lifted. So that, that I, I will just leave it at that. But also there is a counter, a counter comments that do not want cigarettes to be, um, to be allowed. So let me leave it at that for now, for Minister Patel. Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Two specific questions that uh, I'd like to comment on. The first is uh, the one by Olivia from Reuters uh, on the restriction on the number of workers at workplaces. So in the document that has been distributed to members of the media now and that will be, will be available uh, publicly, what is envisaged is that uh, a number of measures uh, will be introduced and we're looking for feedback on these measures to ensure that we have a safer environment at work. The first of these measures is social distance in the workplace itself where uh, the general standard of one and a half meters between workers with as few contact points and uh, measures to avoid 
shared areas, shared surfaces, shared machines, and so on. So the critical thing here is that that one and a half meter social distance may itself have an impact on numbers. The second thing is that even where in level two, uh, sorry, even where in level four, companies return to work, it won't be all the workers in the level. It will be phased in, and in a number of cases, there are uh, some uh, upper limits that um, uh, the new framework introduces, <laughs> and that is to enable, in that first phase, for companies to have a smaller workforce and get the workplace COVID ready, see what the challenges are. And I want to, I want to highlight the, the work that uh, businesses would, uh, would be doing. Many businesses have already started to do so, but from the point where workers come to the factory gate or to the office block, in many cases, as uh, my colleague has indicated, there are various types of biometrics, fingerprint uh, scanners, uh, there are uh, uh, perhaps in some cases uh, arrangements where workers congregate in large numbers when they enter a small confined uh, workplace gate. So companies will be looking at how to make those more COVID friendly in the sense of reducing level of contact between people. Once you go past the entrance, uh, and of course, when you, uh, when you get to the entrance, there would also have to be screening arrangements. And screening involves two key things. One is temperature. So if it's above uh, 37 and a half uh, uh, degree, 38. Uh, uh, so the regulations will set out uh, the detail once it's above uh, the level in the regulations, then uh, those workers would need to be relieved of uh, uh, responsibility to work and uh, be sent for uh, quarantine, testing, and so on. The other part of it, of course, is to check if people have the symptoms normally associated with COVID. So there will be some questions asked. So all of this require that people be trained and that systems be put in place. Uh, finally, the, in addition to the upper limits and the phasing, we're also strongly encouraging companies to enable working from home arrangements, wherever it is possible for someone to productively carry out the responsibilities they have from home during this period. Uh, it, it, would be, it would be helpful because it limits movement and it limits the opportunity for the spread of the virus. There will also be some proposed measures in the documentation on particularly vulnerable persons. Those are people uh, over 60 and people with comorbidities. In other words, those with um, uh, pre-existing illnesses that are particularly vulnerable to, uh, uh, to exposure to COVID. And particularly uh, where you have COVID and you have one of these uh, illnesses, the level of fatality tends to be higher. So uh, to try to work cooperatively with businesses to facilitate all of this. These are our people. We need to save lives. We need to make sure that uh, an older generation is not lost, is not wiped out in the middle of this pandemic. And so we really have to work with each other in achieving this. On the sector arrangements, as again, um, Minister Lamini Zuma indicated, we'll be looking at a number of ways to ensure that uh, the new arrangements are put in place. The most important thing is really to get uh, buy-in and, <clears throat> and, and strong cooperation between workers and managers. So they need to work together to do so. We also need to get firms to embrace the spirit of this. If we fail in um, limiting the spread of the virus and large numbers of people uh, are infected, then uh, unavoidably uh, everybody goes back to level five and it's more restrictions. If we succeed and we can contain the virus, we can increase the testing levels, we can enhance the healthcare facilities, including what uh, companies can do. And there's one big automaker in the Eastern Cape, for example, that's working with the provincial government now uh, to expand public hospitals, to, uh, to go in there with their maintenance teams, clean up the, the hospital, um, improve it so that it's, it's ready for a greater number of uh, COVID patients uh, to come through it. When we do those things, we help to move the level down and then more people uh, can, uh, can enter. But there's also a job for 
uh, union representatives who are at the workplace or shop stewards. Uh, there, there can be cooperation arrangements with bargaining councils, with sector business organizations and other uh, federal structures of business organizations. So we are going to be looking at many different ways of reinforcing this message and working together. Some sectors have already begun to draft sector plans where they work together as a sector to ensure that uh, whatever the new arrangements are that are finally uh, gazetted, that those are introduced in a responsible way in each workplace. <coughs> uh, moving next to uh, Anton uh, from Pretoria FM's question <coughs> on online shopping, I want to make the point that more products will now be uh, able to be ordered online as a result of the fact that more products are now capable of being sold in retail. We have in the documentation that uh, the framework that has been uh, put out uh, to the public today, uh, we've included there not only stores, but we've also included e-commerce, we've included spaza shops and informal traders, so that they're all able to move those goods to final consumers. Of course, uh, uh, as we, uh, in, in the regulations uh, that will be published next week, more details will be put in there. On uh, uh, e-commerce uh, and online shopping in particular, I should point out that hot meals will now be able to be ordered online and delivered to people. Uh, so uh, those of us who have been um, <coughs> missing our favorite hot meals would be able to obtain it in those, in those ways because we, we're trying to get people to stay at home, those who don't need to go to work as part of this arrangement to stay at home because it's about saving lives. At the same time, I should also indicate uh, if we open up um, any one category, let's say e-commerce, unavoidably there's enormous pressure to do the same for physical stores, for spaza shops, for informal traders, so that there's a fair competition platform and when uh, we, we have all the other uh, parts of uh, retailing uh, also selling that, uh, then of course you have huge numbers of people moving in the society. So we need to make sure that we, dis we have a system in place that has wide society support uh, that ensures we don't now uh, multiply and increase dramatically the number of places that sell things to the point where effectively the virus spreads, we have large numbers of people dying, we have coffins all over uh, the show. Um, there were graphic pictures in Italy of um, army trucks being used to move coffins around because all the normal services were overwhelmed and huge numbers of people had died. More than 50,000 <coughs> Americans uh, have died in, um, uh, to date uh, in uh, this pandemic. So it's real. And the fact that we've not had huge numbers of deaths in South Africa uh, is something that should not make us complacent. It's really important that we, we keep uh, the systems and the arrangements in place and that we do everything possible, humanly possible, to save lives. At the same time, we've recognized the importance of um, uh, opening of the economy. So we're trying to uh, link these two uh, to ensure that we go for the greatest level of opening within a framework that is set by, by health considerations. As we get better information, more information, higher levels of testing, we're able to refine the system uh, in the manner that had been um, uh, uh, indicated. And so uh, this is an important moment when we are looking for comments uh, and we are going to be uh, able to, to take into account those comments before the regulations are issued and before the final framework uh, is gazetted. So part of it is, is also today here, and as my colleague uh, has said, uh, even some of the questions the media has asked, uh, for example in cigarettes and so on, are quite useful and a helpful feedback to us about the kind of issues we must take into account in the final list that will be, uh, that will be gazetted. My colleague may also want to, uh, to add on that. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. I think your feedback is very important. Um, but I just also want to 
comment on the question of e-commerce. I think my colleague has commented, uh, commented on it. But just on the issue whether there isn't a danger of spreading it through the packages. I think, yes, there is a real danger. So it means that when you receive a package, you have to take the necessary precautions. Sanitize, clean the package before you even open it. But when you have opened it, also sanitize what's inside because you don't know who was touching it and what are the dangers. But then sanitize your hands as well uh, after all that. So it means if we if we getting more things delivered, then we have to take extra precautions because I may leave a package in front of your door and I may have the virus. And so we need to just make sure that we do take those precautions, um, which, we, which we must take even when you do shopping, actually. Uh, when you come back with shopping, uh, you must take precautions. Uh, so I, I just wanted uh, to, to add that to, to the answer that my colleague has given. But lastly, to just stress again that this is in our hands, all of us, collectively and individually. It is in our hands. If we want to go to level three and down to the lower levels until we get back to normal, we must all take our responsibility, individually and severally, as citizens, as governments and all institutions, business, companies, informal traders, all of us in this country have a collective challenge. And we have to make the relevant sacrifices so that we can move quickly to normal life, back to normal life. But if we don't, if we think, well, it won't affect me, it will affect somebody else, making a big mistake. And even if you think, oh, I can protect myself, but I don't care about the next person making a big mistake. This is one time where our life is so interlinked, where our lives, our well-being is, you, we are united in looking after our well-being as a country and as the world. So it's all in our hands. You wear a mask when you leave your home. You must wear a mask when you leave your home to the public. Whether you made it yourself, whether you bought it, whether it's your scarf, but you must wear a mask. You must wash your hands. You must social distance at all times. Whether you're in a shop, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, social distancing is very important. And sticking to the rules. Don't do like the others who want to beat the system all the time. You're not beating the system, you're putting yourself, your family, and other people in danger. I mean, we've heard stories of people who carry empty coffins and say they are going to a funeral, they are taking the body to another province, only to find that the coffin is empty. Yeah. You're trying to beat the system, but you may be taking a virus with you to another, to your family, to your community, or you may be bringing a virus, the virus back to, or giving it to the other people that you are trying to beat the system with. This is not the time to try and beat the system. <coughs> this is the time to work together because everything that's being said or done is not punishment, is not against anyone, but is for our collective good and it's for our collective responsibility. So if we take that spirit, we will be able to move 
from level four to level three. If we don't take that spirit, we might have to go back to level five or even stricter measures in level five. So in a way, it's all in our hands. It's in the hands of government, it's in the hands of individual citizens, it's in the hands of business, employers, workers. It's all in our hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Did you? Thank you, Minister. Uh, just a couple of the questions. Uh, the first one around uh, hairstyles, uh, hairstylists. Uh, to say all those services where there is direct contract, there's obviously a serious risk of transmission. So hairstylists, massages, uh, hair, uh, nails, uh, uh, as well as uh, those that are beauticians, etc. It's very close contact and personal contact with each other. And so the risk of transmission is much higher. So clearly, those services are prohibited for that reason. I think for the, for the benefit of both those that are, uh, are benefiting from the service and those delivering it as well. I think on the, on the question about what are the criteria and, uh, and how will we make those decisions, I think it's important to, to bear in mind that there are probably four areas that we're looking at. Uh, in looking at them, the, the outcome is not a formula-based outcome. So the things we look at is firstly, what are the number of tests that are done in a particular district? Of those that have been tested, what is the positivity rate? What is the trend around that? What is the health capacity in terms of the number of beds that are available, both the general and ICU beds? And then of those beds, how many are currently occupied by COVID patients? So those are the elements that we look at largely, but the outcome is not a formula. So in other words, we don't take those numbers and add them up and make a decision as to what level we fall into. There are a number of other factors that need to be taken into account before we make that decision. I think the Minister of Health, then taking the advice of the Ministerial Advisory Committee, will then advise us to what level he thinks we should be at. On the workplace, I just want to emphasize the points that Minister Patel has made. We will be publishing a guideline on uh, how the workplace needs to be managed in terms of COVID prevention. Just to emphasize the point that masks need to be used in the work workplace. There needs to be sanitizers or at least running water together with soap so that uh, the, the, the employees can, can, uh, can wash their hands regularly. It's also important that there is random regular testing. There, there is a significant proportion of employees who may be asymptomatic. And so randomly testing them is important. Also those employees, as Minister Patel mentioned, that have comorbidity. So if you have a cardiovascular disease, it's important that you, you, you reconsider whether you want to go into work or, or negotiate with the employer. Similarly, with respiratory diseases such as asthma, COPD, chronic bronchitis, etc., or even some of the immune suppressive conditions such as HIV, TB, diabetes, or if you're on chemotherapy, these obviously pose a significant risk, and our experience from the other countries suggests that the mortality in this group is very high. So we really encourage you to, to rather remain at home rather than going and putting yourself at risk. Um, those were the, the key questions, Minister. The, the last point I wanted to just mention was I think it's important for us to, to, to take lessons from other countries that have dealt with this outbreak. And I was listening to one of the South Africans who were in Wuhan, and she was asked the question, what, what advice can you give South Africa? And her, her point was very important. She said, one of the differences between uh, China and South Africa is that in China, when, when somebody breaks the rules, your neighbor will tell you, these are the rules, please don't break them because it affects not only you, it affects all of us. And I think as a society in South Africa, when we see somebody breaking the rules, let's encourage them to comply so that all of us as a society can make sure that we move along to level three and level two, rather than having to move up to level five. Thank you. Maybe before Minister Mtem, I've got an SMS here. Yes, uh, the person is saying we must also talk about, he's adding to this issue of not allowing cigarettes. He's saying there's something called scafe, where you smoke. Oh, scafe. Yes, and pass it on to the yes, other. Yes, Gave Mebra. 
And, they, and, and he's saying when you allow cigarettes, then the, the spread of the virus can go quickly uh, around this issue of SCAFE. And he's also saying that Abadaba Myamaga Abapuza Usokam Abawente Makaya Bautela E Okambe Okambe Pusa Ranji Balande Leba Puzisan. We ask Kumbus Utinale Nale Nubo in Kinga is a super good lessee for Mobuzo Puzu Mund Gaduna so lessee as you say, they were buying a ganjal that the got to a gepella a final good to six sicumbus and a ganjal got a foot about the basalica bang of a rashilan by opposition in camp. They escape as he picks this as he was a lame over so he could mal in the bagaqua in Gabo. Thank you, Minister Patel. Those are your closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much. I really uh, uh, appreciate the feedback that we've had. And as uh, Minister Lamini Zuma began to engage on the issue of cigarettes, it, the, it illustrates the value of public consultation. And we recognize that within the constraints of time, because we have to move rapidly, but we must have a process of public consultation, that we need to hear the voices of South Africans on this matter, absolutely critical. So while we will be talking to sectors, we also will be monitoring the conversations where we can on social media. We'll be getting feedback uh, from uh, uh, citizens. Uh, they'll be talking to uh, members of parliament, uh, their political parties. They'll be talking directly to us uh, via the representations uh, that they will be making and the information that they're sharing with us. And this process of public consultation acts as a means of dampening special interest lobbies that try to put uh, one point of view across. Ultimately, we need to make sure that we act in the broader interest, and we can only do so by being open-minded and hearing the concerns that are coming, and of course taking the advice of the health and the medical experts. One critical issue that we're looking at is whether the extent of the opening is too fast, whether the kind of phasing we are introducing is appropriate, because I want to really underline what my colleague has said, what Minister Lamini Zuma has said today repeatedly, and that is it's a risk-based uh, approach that we're adopting where if we don't proceed cautiously, if we do a rushed return <coughs> to work, a firm will benefit. A firm will benefit for a few weeks. Production restarts. But that firm will uh, potentially suffer losses for a very long time, for many, many years, when many workers in that firm uh, test COVID positive. And for those who die or pass away, the loss is permanent. To their families, they would be losing a breadwinner, a permanent source of income. And so we've got to move. Uh, yes, we want to open the economy. It's very important. At the same time, we need to make sure that the pace we do it in, the, speed, the manner in which we phase it in, does not uh, result in a, a significant uh, spread of the virus. We've looked at the experience globally, and countries that opened too quickly had an enormous spread of the virus, and then are starting to close again. And so there is no textbook anywhere in the world. The best thing is to listen to the, the medical experts. Uh, we've been... Um, uh, following this, to listen to the advice of the World Health Organization in these matters, uh, to get feedback from our own people, and to, to work together at workplace, firm, sector level, in society, uh, to contain this. This is not about a government regulation or government policy. This is about us as a country um, closing ranks and working together to limit the damage of a virus that we all confronted with, and as was put so eloquently by Minister Mtembu, it's a virus that no, knows no color, no class. Uh, it is deadly. It has taken enormous numbers of lives elsewhere in the world. And the new framework that we're putting out for consultation with the public, 
that we're putting out for consultation with businesses, with the trade union movement and others, uh, is an attempt uh, to get feedback on whether we've got the balance right in these things. Thank you very much. Since your last words. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to say, South Africans, let's do what we can to protect one another and to make sure that we can go p back to work, those who, who are going back to work slowly, but also carefully and safely, so that we can just move progressively to the lower levels. Thank you. We, we, we have been here, colleagues, from, uh, we, we started at around 11.10. We are now at 14.10, almost, for very good reasons, for very, very good reasons. Those who have access to the coronavirus world meter will know that we are all in the entire world, we are almost now at 3 million people who are infected. But people who have died are almost 200,000. Just people who have died. One country that we will not mention has over 52,000 people who have died. One country. There is another one that has over 25,000 people who have died. South Africans, we have 79 of our own who have lost their lives. As we ease the levels of the lockdown, going to level four, what my colleagues have said is what matters the most. Wherever we are, whether in the work environment, do we practice those hygiene uh, strategies and uh, guidelines that we have been given ever since we heard about this? Social distancing. It's now called physical distancing. One and a half meter to two meters. Even at the workplace. That's what we are saying. Even at the workplace, we must screen. Those that will be opening their firms, if we all agree, ultimately, because this is a consultative process. Uh, we are consulting with the public, this is the view of government, that we must come to a level four, but have some measure of economic activity being streamed in. But even those that we are streaming in must screen their people. Those that, that have a bigger number of employees must even test their people, uh, uh, sectors like your mining sectors, etc., etc. So we, 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 we must live with this even in the workplace. We, we must still ensure that we don't touch one another. Uh, we don't kiss one another. Because as we all know, this disease and this infection only gets to another person through another person. Therefore, if people are not mixing, you know, we read something yesterday on Daily Dispatch. Uh, of Eastern Cape that said in one village there's now 40 people who were infected because they attended a funeral. This is real. So what we are talking about here is real. As a country, as we speak now, we are standing at people who have been infected who are standing at 4,220 as of yesterday. Indeed, the figure might be higher today. But like my colleague said, South Africans, mama, it is up to us. Uguti singa ye machimi ni singa wafune la machima singa wafulanga. Na uguti futi singa ye mashebi. Singa ye ugi opuza. Even si bambisale nge ikal. Upuzi ikal. Sinigeza na ngemba ampa. O 
noma ngomubutwa labasemakhaya uma senza konke loko singakwenzi konke loko okwenza ukuthi na sihlangane nalegciwane impela sizwa sincosa izolincoba lesisifo sizolincoba legciwane uma olesibambisene and again we end ngamagama shuma umkosazana ukuthi noma ikupho kwenzayo uyobunga kwenzele wena you'll be doing it for all of us but if you also mess up you are messing up for all of us unfortunately uh, you might be then be responsible through your actions for whatever that will happen to another south african sizwe kosazana sorry sengqina nje sori ukuqela ukuthi ngithole enye sms ebuye swazini oh swadini swadini uthi in swaziland when the kumbi users were forced to wear masks they borrowed each other their masks the conductors asked them as they were alighting to leave the mask behind for the next group of people hallelujah so kufuneka sizibheke zonke lezinto i think in tebalekile le ukuthi ngashi ukuthi hayi mase wehla shi mask yakho so inika omunye i mask yakho eyakho ebusuku yayi wash awinika omunye umuntu ama mask awabolekanisi uyayi washa uphindwe iqoke ukuthi uzoyikhipha ko ekhaleni lakho emlonyeni wakho inika omunye umuntu kuyi inkinga enkulu le ngoba mawunegciwane ushuthi seligcwelele impela mase nginika sengiyakunikeza igciwane noma nawe ungnike yakho usuyangnika igciwane balekile that's why ngithi asingazama ukubitha isystem asizama ukwenza okufanele ngoba lokho babekwenza kwakuzama ukubitha isystem bolakana ngama mask kodwa lokho kuzokwenza ukuthi igciwane ipepeteke so let's not give somebody else your mask your mask is your mask the end of the day you wash it you can't wait tomorrow without having washed it thank you impela sesikhulumile si bestori sikhulume into eyodwa nje ukuthi asibambisaneni asibe muntu munye ekulwisaneni nalesifo nalegciwane eh singa bolisani wakubambana bambana ngezandla futhi siqhelelane 1.5 meter to 2 meters ngisho nasemsebenzini eh kanti futhi nawe ungazibambi ungazibambi ungakagezanga ezandla uzibambe kufanele ugeze njalo izandla noma usanitize ngoba uma uzibamba ungakagezanga izandla kanti ubuke obamba izinto ezithize ngoba le gciwane liyakwazi ukuhlala ngisho nasestofini liyakwazi ukuhlala ngisho eh nakudesk yakho so ke kufanele ke nanjalo nje nawe ugeze izandla noma usanitize ukuze ungathathi le gciwane ulususe entweni ethize uzi infect her wena so sibonga kakhulu ke kubantu bathene ngizima Africa ukuthi lana nisilalele namuhla kunale document lomculo esewukhiphayo ke namuhla uyakuwa wonke umuntu sesewukhona o sesewufakile lomculo abadinga ukuthola uyatholakala ku website ye coronavirus www coronavirus website kanti futhi ukhona futhi naku website ye GCIS eh ungangena namanje uthwela omqulu eh sizafana kuwa wonke futhi amanye ama website akhona kuhulumeni eh so that kungabi nomuntu ozoba nengxaki ukuthola lomqulu kahulumeni okukhuluma uthi na uma sikhuluma nge level 4 lockdown sikhuluma ngani eh siya consulta ke kanjalo sibonga kakhulu ke kubo bonke abaye bashaya ingcingo ukuthi nabezwe babeke imibuzo yabo thank you very much to the journalists that we are working with and everybody else particularly to the people at home let's continue saving lives 
let's continue staying at home because that's the only way of this this virus can only move if we move the only people after all of us are agreed on level four that will be able to move are those whose various sectors and work places will have opened and they will only have a responsibility to only go to work and come back and go nowhere else uh, because Uma Mokulmen also on a curfew, uh, curfew where after coming from work you are expected to stay at home so that message of staying at home will still continue because it's only through staying at home that we save lives and as we see what's happening throughout the world it's quite clear that we have done our best as a nation we have done our best as a nation let's not lower our guards now let's not lower our guards now thank you south africa and thank you very much for all those at home who have been listening to this broadcast. Thank you very much. Go to our website, familiarize yourself with the document that we have just put to the public now. Thank you, and thank you very much, Sevlen. My colleagues, thank you very much.